Now, as I said, Iran's Islamic revolutionaries deposed the ruling monarch, the Shah of Iran, 34 years ago and formed the Islamic Republic that has been heard and felt around the world. The Shah fled to Egypt where he died of cancer a year later. And his eldest son, the former Crown Prince Reza Pahlavi, moved to the United States and now lives between here and Europe, where he's trying to breathe life into a meaningful opposition to the Ayatollahs. Reza Pahlavi is the spokesman for the Iranian National Council and he joins me now from Paris. Welcome to the program. Thanks for joining me. Good evening, Christian. Good to be on your show. So let me ask you, you are called the spokesman for this movement. What are you realistically trying to achieve at this point? The essence of this council really started in the advent of what happened back in 2009, a movement which saw over three and a half million Iranians in silent protest defying the regime and showing their willingness and eagerness to have a democratic uh, situation at home, which unfortunately is not achievable under this regime. Therefore, uh, this council was formed with the sole aim to lead a campaign that demands as a main goal circumstances in our country in which we can hold free and fair elections, as described by the Interparliamentary Union, uh, which uh, clearly uh, depicts uh, what circumstances has to exist in Iran or anywhere else in order to have uh, true elections. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, under this regime, elections have never been either free or fair, and the constitution of this regime prevents any kind of reforms that would make this possible as long as it is in place. So, obviously you're outside Iran. What kind of support do you have that could actually even affect any change from within? Describe to me who are the supporters of your movement. What we did, Christian, for the first time in the annals of Iranian history, and in fact the opposition, is that this time we started grassroots. The first draft that forms the principles upon which this council was founded, in fact, came out of Evin prison. We talked longly with dissidents and political prisoners, and about 44 drafts later, we had a 16-point agreement that gathers people who are basically secular Democrats from left or right, monarchists, Republicans, uh, former members of the MEK, former members of the Iranian diplomatic corps who are part of the Green Embassy, who are part of this movement. It is in that sense quite diverse. It is not ideologically based. It doesn't pretend to be an alternative, nor does it claim to be representative of the people. All that it does is to promote a campaign that asks for uh, circumstances uh, that, it, uh, that has to occur in our country. Mm -hmm. As such, the representation was very wide. We, ha we had about 25,000 people who participated in signing this document, half of them from Iran, and we had the first time ever elections that uh, basically uh, nominated about 500 people to constitute the first council, uh, which was uh, about two months ago here in Paris on the 27th and 28th of April, uh, out of which uh, 35 people were elected at, as the Supreme uh, Council and nine member uh, political office and I was also elected as a spokesman for this uh, council right, let me, and we are directly in contact with people at home. Let me ask you about something that certainly we hear a lot from people inside Iran. They want better relations with the outside world including the US, including the West and they also want their nuclear rights to be uh, respected. If there was a change, how would you propose dealing with reopening relations with the West and maintaining what they believe is their right for nuclear enrichment. I'm not talking about weapons, I'm talking about their right for nuclear enrichment. Well, obviously, Christian, when you have a regime that has been untransparent and ultimately untrustworthy from the outside world uh, point of view, not to mention what it does to its own citizens, there's a sharp contrast between a democratic, secular, parliamentary democracy which in essence is, uh, has as an objective to serve the best interests of the nation while having the best possible relations with the international community. Uh, to make a long story short, I think that in one stroke you can eliminate everything that this regime has in a problem uh, for, uh, whether it is vis-a-vis -vis its own citizens as well as the international community, be it the nuclear agenda, terrorism, support for radical groups, uh, and instead, uh, when, once you will have a democratic system in Iran, which will be truly representative of our people's aspiration, you can rest assured that none of these current threats will ever 
exist and at the same time there will be a truly responsible government that will look at the best interest of our country, its sovereignty and its self-determination. In our last minute, I want to ask you, you know, there's a lot of talk about a potential strike on Iran's nuclear facilities. Would you support such a thing? And what do you think that would do to what you want, which is a democratic movement? Well, I've always been against any form of foreign attack. As a matter of fact, it is one of the principles that we adhere to in our council that we're against any form of military uh, attacks on our country uh, from outside or from anywhere else. We believe that the change has to occur as a result of civil disobedience and nonviolence. We call for national reconciliation and amnesty. We have also called in, with that respect uh, to the world to say that if diplomacy has failed, and war is certainly not a solution, it's lose-lose, only the regime would benefit from it and democracy will certainly be uh, harmed. The best way is to this time proactively support the democratic people of Iran by helping them in this campaign since the regime has refused to voluntarily leave the scene. As a matter of fact, case in point, we have asked people this time to proactively cast their votes, not to the ballots of this regime that is not to be trusted, but to send their vote that we want free elections to all the embassies in Tehran of foreign democratic governments, to the office of the United Nations, so that the world can hear that ultimately Iranians want to have uh, free elections as the only means to measure what they truly want for themselves in the future. Reza Pahlavi, thank you so much for joining me from Paris.